So doing the gyro setup on this one is actually pretty easy. Um, this gyro has a uh, real interesting way of setting it and I really like this method because everything is clearly indicated by LEDs on the gyro. Um, you're not having any uh, programming difficulty. Little insert that's included with the kit is very nice and it explains quickly how to set up the gyro in five steps there and um, so I'm just going to go through that to show you how it's done. Um, but I'm going to start with first things first. And uh, one thing that I think is very important on gyros in general that a lot of people seem to uh, not quite get right is um, one of the most important things is to make sure that when you set up your gyro you have gotten the right servo size horn on there and on this one it is super tiny so go ahead and use the recommendations um, I've seen pictures of folks using much longer servo horns than this this is five millimeters and there are different measurements listed if you read the, all the documentation um, which is another thing that people should do <laughs> before they go post it on the forums um, Go ahead and read the uh, book and you'll notice that at one point it says make a 5 millimeter horn and at the other point it says make a 4.5 millimeter horn. Half a millimeter, I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But, the problem is, if you get this too long, um, no matter what you set the gain at, you're never going to get the wag out of the tail because it's just going to be too sensitive no matter what you do. Um, ideally, uh, on these I think on all gyros, um, you're going to want your gain to be, you know, 60, 75 percent, maybe 80 percent even, in heading hold mode. And um, if you can get it to be nice and stable at that point, then I think you're good. But at first, you want to start with the right length of servo horn. And then another thing that I do is I just go ahead and take the servo itself and plug it into a receiver directly and center the horn so that it centers correctly. Make sure you get the right horn, get it on there the right way so that it's capable of centering without sub trim or anything like that. Um, the other thing that I notice people doing a lot which is really odd and I don't exactly understand is that um, they'll use sub trim to try to center the gyro servo. This doesn't work. Um, don't do that. You, you need to have the horn centered with everything at zero um, because the gyro itself cannot tell the difference between sub trim and if you push the stick. It's the, it sees the same thing um, when you use sub trim as when you push the stick around and so um, when you put in sub trim to try to center the servo it's, it's just not going to work. Alright now step one of uh, setting up the gyro is um, I like to use uh, I've got my DX7 radio and I really prefer using this um, sort of automatic screen here um, I think this is actually a lot better than using the gear switch or ATVs or something like that to do your gyro um, and the reason I have a lot of reasons for it, but the reason is primarily I'm flying in idle up mode. I'm never really flying in normal mode. And um, so I'm always ever going to probably just use one gain setting. And I'm, it's not like I'm going to be flipping back and forth between gain settings or anything. And um, if I need to reset my gyro or something like that, um, it's just as easy to just kind of unplug and plug back in as it is to kind of do the. Uh, flipping back and forth thing and on this GP750 gyro I don't think it will actually reset if you flip back and forth between rate mode and heading hold mode so um, I just find that this makes it a lot easier I never have to worry about flipping a gyro switch or anything when I get everything going um, get everything set right figure out the gain numbers that I need um, I never have to worry about it again all I do is do my flight modes and everything works right 
Um, as you can see here, um, I have it set for a little bit more gain in the normal mode and also in the throttle hold mode. And the reason behind that is because in the normal mode and in the throttle hold mode, um, the gyro is going to be getting uh, changing head speed. And so the, a little bit of increased sensitivity uh, doesn't hurt there. Uh, you're going to use throttle hold mode um, for doing setup. And so see the little one is blinking there. And um, so in throttle hold mode, in terms of flying, it is only going to be used for autos. And uh, as far as I know, TRX250 is not capable really of uh, doing an auto gyro down to the ground. Um, so, not going to really worry about that. Probably never use this in, in flight. But um, really like this feature of the DX7 radio because it lets me basically use all of my switches for something else. So um, if I want to set up a throttle hold switch or on a nitro heli or something, if I want to set up a throttle cut, something like that, um, this eliminates the need of a switch to set the gyro gain. So that's the first thing I do. And um, then I go ahead and after I get into that screen, go ahead and turn on the helicopter, plug it in, and what you'll see is, I don't know if you can see that there, but on the gyro, little green light will light up, okay, and that indicates that it is in heading hold mode, and um, one thing I found that was kind of weird on this one was if you decrease the gain down to 51%, see that gyro kind of wigs out. Um, <laughs> it, it doesn't know whether you want heading hold mode or rate mode or what, and so it sits there and kind of blinks. As soon as you go to 50%, bang, it's in rate mode. And if you go back up to 52, it's solid in heading hold mode. So that's how to tell what your gyro is doing um, during operation. Now to do the setup on this thing, there is a little switch. And I'm sorry guys, but I am not going to take my gyro off here just to show you this. There is a tiny little switch right there. You just hit that switch you can feel it kind of click and if you hold it down the gyro goes into programming mode and you can see that the light will come on on the item that you are currently programming okay and it starts out with um, setting the gyro rate and I'll go through this real quick here but um, you're going to want to use your radio rudder stick to actually affect the programming mode. So let me show you that again. And I'll go ahead and show you how it switches back and forth. So if you hold that down, it goes into programming mode. And then when you move the rudder stick, you can see it blinking together. Okay, this is green. So that's the on the standard setting for the gyro speed and then if you move the rudder stick to the other side you see that the big light, the main light, turns red and that is not the setting that I want to use so I'm going to go ahead and turn it back like this and then if you let go of the rudder stick it will go ahead and stay then you can go ahead and pop that button to the next thing and next thing to set is whether you have a digital servo or an analog servo and digital servo is green and analog servo is red so I'm going to go ahead and set this to digital servo mode and hit that button again okay 
Now this is the normal or reverse direction. And since I've mounted the gyro backwards on here, I have it set for reverse, but you could also set it to normal that way. So that way is reverse, the red one. And that's what I'm going to use. Go ahead and pop that button again. Now the next one is the limit setting. And the way that you set that is to just go ahead and move the rudder stick until it gets right up against there. Edge, wherever you want the limit set on that side. And then go ahead and move the rudder stick all the way to the other side until you find the spot where you want the limit set on the other side and uh, I think that's really nice to be able to have a limit setting on both sides um, so then the last option here uh, is to go ahead and set the go ahead and set the delay setting on the delay setting you want the um, LED set to red for small helicopters and green for you know bigger ones um, and apparently the TRX 250 uh, and 450 both count as small helicopters so I'm gonna set that to red and um, if you go ahead and hit the switch after that then you're done okay on these little settings on here um, on the first two the gyro actually has written on it in one color um, see it says DS and then the AS on the gyro is actually red so the setting that's where it corresponds to the green light is the DS and the red colored writing is what corresponds to the red setting same on normal and reverse and then on limit and delay um, limit uh, show you how to I showed you how to set that up so that's pretty simple just go to both extremes and set that and then on delay um, just kinda have to remember that uh, red is for little helicopters and green is for big ones so I think setting up the gyro for this thing is pretty easy um, I'm really happy that they included you know a gyro that's easy to do um, when I programmed mine I went ahead and brought it up to a hover in the house here and it ended up being you know pretty locked in with the 75 and the 72 but uh, still have to go and play around with that and, you know of course your numbers may vary um, know how to set this up tail starts wagging you got it too high and if the tail drifts a little bit then you got it too low um, and uh, I'm not going to bother with uh, raid mode or anything like that so um, that is very simple Charles set up for the GP750 um, hope you uh, understand that and uh, feel free to send me your questions if you have any and thanks for watching.